Procrastinators! I'm back with another card from the Create and Inkspire July kit. If you have not heard about the Create and Inkspire kit, uh, Courtney Creever is doing this on her new online publication site, createandinkspire.com. I will have the links down in the description box below for you. So I started by stamping this on 80 pound Nina Solar White Classic Crest cardstock. And because I'm going to be Copic coloring eventually, <laughs> I'm not going to start Copic coloring, but I will be Copic coloring eventually on this. So I took three of the flowers from the Wildflowers stamp set that is included in the kit, and I stamped them in Gina K. Amalgam ink. And then I'm going to uh, mask them off. I did cut my masks with my brother's scanning cut. Um, it did chew up a couple of the leaves, but... Maybe if I used actual masking paper that was a little bit stronger, it might, might not have. I'm not sure. I use um, Avery full label ID sheets or something like that. Um, it'll pop up here in a minute. Uh, removable ID label sheets that are full sheets. There we go. So I'm only going to show the masking of this one flower because, well, it's repetitive. But anyway, for the other two flowers, um, the leaves that got chewed up a little bit, I just used some of the Nouveau masking fluid that's included in the kit, dab that over the leaves, let it dry, and it was no big deal. It actually worked really well. So I'm taking um, this other flower, this last flower that's in the set, and I'm just going to stamp that in between the other flowers that are masked off, and then I'm going to put a mask over this flower as well because we are going to be doing some ink blending for our background. We're going to be using some stencils. Um, for that. So I just need everything masked off so I can keep it nice and clean for my Copic coloring a little bit later. I'm just going to stamp this last flower and then we will move on. So this is the... Oh, I didn't have a little thing for it. Let's see. This is the Wildflower Meadow Stencil. And it's got a grass border on one side and a cloud border on the other. So I'm just going to take this uh, grass side and I ink blended um, mowed lawn. And then I'm shifting it and I'm going to come in with the peeled paint. And this just gives us a little bit more dimension with our grass. Then once I get done with that, we're going to move on and, I mean, flowers don't grow without sun, so I decided that I needed to add some sun. And I'm coming in with the Honey Bee Stamps Sunburst Background Stencil. This is not included in the kit, and I do believe that this stencil is retired. Um, so I'm coming in with the, the largest of the stencils, the one with the largest holes, and actually... <laughs> Truth be told, this is not the largest of the holes. Um, I screwed up, but um, off camera I fixed it and made it the largest of the holes. I relined it back up and, and fixed it, but I didn't want to have to waste your time with that. So the, you start with the largest of the holes in your lightest color, or at least this is how I do it. And then you move to the medium sized one um, and do your medium color. And then you move to the smallest sized one and do your um, your darkest color. Or at least that's how I do it. I don't know how other people do it, but that's how I do it. This is how I get the effect that um, that I got. So this is a mustard seed. The other one was squeezed lemonade. Um, and I don't, I'm not going all the way down with my sun rays on this one. Just about, I don't know, three quarters of the way or so. And then I'm going to pull this off and do the smallest stencil, the one with the smallest holes. Line it up. And we're going to come in with... Um, sorry if you can hear that noise behind me. One of my cats is being a pest. <laughs> um, so this is, I believe, spiced marmalade, and I decided that it wasn't going to show up, so I come in with rusty hint, or, no, is this one spiced marmalade? Um, no. I'm pretty sure this is rusty hinge. I don't remember. Um, nope, this is spiced marmalade. And then I just come a little bit, uh, just a little bit down. Again, I don't come all the way down. So now I'm using the cloud border stencil, um, or the cloud border on the uh, wildflower stencil. And I'm just coming in into the white areas in between the rays because blue and yellow 
make orange <laughs> or make green I mean <laughs> um, and I did not want green in my sky so um, I'm trying to avoid the sun rays as much as possible and just go in between um, in between in the white areas with this tumbled glass here um, and just fill in so I have some clouds in my sky uh, I am using a small brush to help me achieve that and I'm going coming in with a pretty light hand as well and I do right now I'm, I'm wiping off the stencil so I can flip it over and get a little bit different look to my clouds in this in this larger white area too um, because this one doesn't have like four sides to the clouds um, stencil like a lot of cloud stencils have so I, I did want to get a little bit different look to my clouds and again I'm just picking little areas and and ink blending those clouds in between. Now my friend Renee over at Delaney Jane Cards, she uses different colors in her in her sky for her clouds, like pinks and purples and, and stuff like that. So I thought I would give that a try as well. So I'm coming in here with the spun sugar and uh, doing the same. Now I'm not gonna show all of this because you just watched me do the blue and it's the same exact thing for the pink. Now we're going to move on to the Copic coloring and starting with this red rose. I'm using R59, R29, and R27. I always go in with my darkest color because I am heavy handed with the Copic inks for whatever reason. I think it's because my hands move a little slow and the longer your marker touches the paper, the more ink gets saturated into the paper fibers. So if I go lightest to darkest and darkest to lightest, like a lot of people do, um, I end up with bleeding. It's just the way it works for me. Um, do whatever works best for you, but this is what works best for me. Of course, if I make a mistake and put my darkest color where I don't want it to go, then I have a little bit of a problem. But <laughs> I just try to be very, very careful about where I put my darkest color. Um, so I'm just blending it out with the mid-tone right now, and then um, I will move on to the the lightest shade. I was pretty excited about this kit when um, when it got or when it was released and we could see what everything that was in it. I was not privy to what was in it before of course um, but I was very excited about it because flowers are my jam. I love to color flowers for whatever reason they are the easiest thing for me to color. I, I struggle with the with cutesy animals, people, um, stuff like that. But flowers, I just, they're easier for me. I don't know if that anybody else is like that, but for whatever reason, I can look at a flower and just know where to put the shadows and, and stuff like that. But other things, I, I really struggle with, with other images and where to put the flowers. I really have to think, or not where to put the flowers, where to put the shading. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I just, other image, I'm just still not, I still struggle with that. I'm just not that advanced in my coloring, I guess, to, to really just look at something and know where to, where to put that stuff. Um, but flowers are just easier for me, I guess. Um, so now we're going to move on to these orange flowers and I know you're thinking, Amanda, you're coloring them blue. They're not orange, <laughs> but bear with me here. So um, I'm doing what's called um, an undertone or an underpainting and I decided to give this a try. I saw it a while back on I have no idea whose channel or what I was watching or reading or what, I don't know where I saw it, but I saw it somewhere. and. I wrote it down because I liked the combination and I decided to try it. I just wish I would have remembered where I saw it because I just wrote down the combination, of course. I didn't write down where I saw it at. So they used a B32, I think is where I, what I said it was up on the screen. I never pay attention to these things when I'm doing the voiceover. The screen's so tiny compared to what you people that do videos, I'm sure you know, but people that don't do videos, the screen is so tiny when you're doing the voiceover and, and my eyes are terrible. <laughs> So, um, yeah. So anyway, I did the undertone in blue or the underpainting in blue. And then, um, and then I'm coming in with the, the red, I believe it was an R27.
Yes, an R27, which was my lightest color for the red rose. And then I'm going to blend it out with a couple YR markers, um, YR07 and a YR04. And this is just going to, it's going to mute the, the, the vibrancy of the, the YR markers a bit. Uh, it probably mutes to the right a little bit too, but I didn't really notice that so much, but I did mute, I did notice it with the YRs a little bit. Um, and so it just changes the color a little bit slightly of your, of your Copics and gives you a little bit different, um, a different hue, I guess you could call it. Um, I probably should have done one with the underpainting and one without so you could see better what it does, but I didn't think about that until just now. So sorry. <laughs> um, but if you have these markers, you could definitely try it at home and see, see what you think of the look. I thought it was interesting. Um, so then I'm doing, uh, some purples here. It's a V17, V15, and V12. And I'm just going in with my shading here first, and then I will pull out the color, obviously. <laughs> um, these ones I thought were kind of fun because there was a lot of overlapping petals compared to some of the other ones. And, uh, I did do two different purples this purple and then another purple on the other side where I use what I consider my favorite purple combination where I start with a, an E57. So I did do, a t uh, you know, the variants here, which is why I wish I would have done the variants with the, the blue undertone and the non-blue undertone. Because here you can see the difference between this and um, when I get to the other side and I do the one with the brown because it has the V17 and a V15. I just took out the V12 and swapped it for an E57 instead. So one's, this one's the lighter purple and the other one's the darker purple. So I thought that was kind of fun. I've been having a lot of fun playing with my, my Copic markers. So, <clears throat> in fact, the other night I just kind of sat down with one of those color charts that you can print off online and I just sat there and played with, played with combos and just, played with them and found what I liked and what I didn't and what mixed well for me and what didn't. And I don't know if anybody else does that, but maybe it's because I'm kind of new to them. I need to get to know them a little bit more, but, um, that's what I did to sat, sit down and get to know them a little bit more. I found some combos that I liked, some that I didn't, and, and it was kind of fun. So I highly suggest doing that if you're new to Copics and you don't know what combos you like and what you don't just sit down and and play with them. Um, I also looked up some combos, you know, just Googled Copic co color combinations. And, and if I found a combo that I liked that I didn't have all the colors for, I pulled out my hex chart and, and saw some that were kind of close and, and started substituting and some worked out, some didn't. And, you know, it's teaching me about my markers and I thought it was fun. So here is the, um, the dark purple combination that I was talking about where I start with a, um, E57. I did get this one, I believe, from Jennifer Dover, and I really like it a lot. It is my favorite purple combination so far. Now, not that I have a whole lot of purple combinations yet. <laughs> For those of you that have been following me, I've only had my Copics, what, like two months? Um, but it is definitely my favorite purple combination. I really like it. I like the deep, um, the deep purple that you get with that brown. I really like it. I think it's, I think it's very pretty. So I had a lot of fun, um, making this card, trying out the different colors and I like the sun ray and, you know, masking isn't always my jam, but I definitely had a lot of fun with this card and all the colors and the, you know how I like to go all out with cards. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I don't typically just, I don't do clean and simple. It's not really my thing. <laughs> I like to go all out and I know that's not some people's jam. I know a lot of people think that's a lot of work and too much work for a card, but, um, it's what I do. I go all out. I do all the ink blending and the techniques and the, and the, all the work. <laughs> my cards don't take, you know, 20, 30 minutes to make. My cards take hours sometimes, <laughs> sometimes all day. 
hell, I've had cards go into multiple days sometimes. <laughs> it doesn't help that I'm pretty slow at coloring and, and making cards, but you know, when you've got messed up hands, sometimes things can span multiple days when you get tired and you just gotta take a break. So I'm finishing up the, uh, the centers of the flowers here <clears throat> and then we will move on to the stems and I'm only going to show one stem because they were all colored exactly the same color combination and pretty much the exact same way. <clears throat> I only did um, one yellow for the centers. They were kind of small. I didn't really feel like shading that tiny area. Um, and then now we are moving on to the stems and the leaves. I did do a three color combination for that. Did a little bit of shading. <clears throat> and then we are pretty much finishing up the coloring here. I hope that I didn't bore you too much. <laughs> I'm still trying to uh, find a decent, um, decent balance between not speeding up my videos too much, but trying to figure out what to talk about during the coloring. So I did use the sentiment stamps that came in the uh, kit. Then I took the rose and I'm stamping it on the inside. And then we're going to start putting my card together. <clears throat> and I did use Versafine um, Claire in Nocturne to stamp the sentiments and the inside. And I did mat that front panel on a piece of black cardstock, which was not included in the kit. It was just in my stash with a uh, just slightly bigger than my panel. So I had a, a 1 8 inch border all the way around it. And then we are going to bling this card up. So in the kit, there were some Trinity stamp jewels that were just gorgeous. I had to use a few of those, of course. <clears throat> so I'm just figuring out placement. And we've talked about this before. I struggle with placement of jewels and things. So I did play around with this a little bit. I didn't... Um, didn't make you do sit through all that. Um, I did get them on there and then I'm covering this with the Nuvo Aqua Shimmer Pen and Glitter Gloss which is not included in the kit but um, I think just about everybody has some kind of form of this you know some kind of form of shimmer pen. So I did cover the flowers in that and look at that shimmer. And that finishes off the card for today. Um, don't forget the links for Create and Inspire and whatnot will be in the description box below. And I hope you enjoyed the card today. And as always, have a great day.